Kia ora. Thank you, uh, everyone, for, for being here for this. Um, patients are funny, aren't they? They come to you with interesting stories, and then uh, you don't always get the truth from them. Uh, this guy literally came to my clinic yesterday, uh, so I threw it in the talk at the last moment. He said, oh, I've got this lump on my back, Doc, and uh, you know, to, I'm really annoyed with my two previous GPs who said it was nothing to worry about, and then I saw my GP last week, and they said, ooh, this is dangerous. Um, so I said, look, you've got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the two previous GPs actually got it right, and the one that caused a panic is the one that's uh, doing you a disservice. <laughs> What's the problem? These are very common uh, issues with patients. They'll come to you with their little lumps and bumps. Um, and uh, over a lifetime, lipomas are almost inevitable. If you've got a Labrador dog, they're definitely inevitable. Uh, but for people as well, by the time you get to 80, most people have had at least one lipoma. Most lumps and bumps that you see are not dangerous and are usually nothing to worry about. Um, now, the NHS in uh, the UK is obviously a much bigger organisation than we are in public health in New Zealand. On their website, they've actually got a page that says, if you've got a lipoma, don't even worry about it. You know, for the most part, these are nothing to be concerned about. The most common things you'll see will be either cysts or lipomas. And it's pretty easy to tell the difference for the most part. Cysts will usually have a little punctum in them. Uh, the cysts may express material when you ask the patients about them. It's often their partners that get great joy out of squeezing them. <laughs> Don't know why. Um, but they often also present with inflammation or infection, and that's pretty obvious to see. Um, the general rule is if they're minor enough to think that you could remove them under local anaesthetic, they're unlikely to be offered surgery in the public system. So don't even think about referring them for the most part. <laughs> These are the kind of things we're talking about. So um, little cysts, they've often got a punctum which may be dark. If they're on the scalp, they're a variation of that called a pilar cyst. Um, and the lower two show that uh, they can become inflamed or even infected with, with the horrible material coming out. But they're pretty obvious clinically and you don't uh, usually have much in the way of a diagnostic dilemma. Lipomas can be anywhere in the body, they can be small, they're often around the back and the scapular girdle, um, but they can get larger and sometimes quite dramatic in size. If the time frame is such that they've been go slowly growing over a very long period of time, still they're usually not a major cause for concern, but they can get to quite dramatic sizes. One of the questions you'll ask yourself or ask us, should I arrange a biopsy of these? Short answer is usually no, okay? Um, FNA is as the most common diagnostic test that you might consider. It's unreliable for lipomas uh, because you're getting such a small sample of cells and even the malignant versions of lipomas, which are very rare, liposarcomas, they'll usually just show fatty cells, won't give you an answer. So don't bother about doing it. If you stick a needle into a cyst, all that's going to do is stuff's going to squeeze out or infection's going to get in. So for the most part, biopsy, don't worry about it. Should I arrange an ultrasound? Again, the answer is usually no. Because the ones that are simple and straightforward, you don't need that information. The information you get from an ultrasound is often non-specific, it may be unreliable, and it may unnecessarily scare people. So again, I don't usually suggest ultrasound for these sort of things. Should I remove it myself? Please, yes. <laughs> Now, some of you will have passed through surgical units or have an interest, and if you think you can do this, please do it and do it with our blessing. We're never going to criticise you for trying it. If you've got the skills, do it. If it's small enough to be done under local anaesthetic, we're unlikely to do it in the hospital because we just don't have the resources to do it. Some of you may have colleagues that do it and just set up a, an informal network and, and refer to your colleagues that do it. Private surgery is another option, but you know, as someone and, and many of my colleagues do this as well, the minimum we're going to charge for even a small thing is going to be $500 or so for a surgical fee, and then you are often got theatre time as well. So people that don't have insurance, they're going to be up for a minimum of $1,000 or more. So just try and reassure them that most of the time they don't need it, or you guys do it yourself. 
Um, and those of you that have done it or, or are contemplating doing it, it's pretty simple. You've all seen books. There's YouTube videos galore these days. Um, uh, I think there's the Pimple Popper website, which is bizarrely popular. Um, but you know, there's, there's things that will show you how to do this. And it's simple and straightforward for the ones that are never going to make it through to the public hospital. If you've got an inflamed cyst in particular, don't be afraid to leave it open. You know, we all worry about primary closure, but these things, if you take them out, many of them will get infected anyway. And if you've got active inflammation, don't even try and close it. They'll settle themselves down once you get rid of the infection. It's the same as incision and drainage of an abscess. You're getting rid of the mucky material, the healthy body will take care of the rest of it. Now, should I refer? Um, yes if you've got worrying features or size features that make you think about it. I want everyone to close their eyes just briefly for a moment and imagine you're holding a ball of plasticine that's about five centimeters spherical, small lemon, okay? Squash it and then it spreads out. So some of these things that you're seeing might be larger than five centimeters in their greatest dimension, but if you reformat it and squash it back into the ball, if it's bigger than five centimeters, they're the ones we want to see. We still may not offer surgery, but at least we're happy to see them and then reassure the patient or arrange something as required. If it's rapidly growing, that's the ones we want to see, because they're the ones that may not be something simple, but may be something sinister, but you're just catching them in an early phase. And they're the ones that we can really benefit from seeing. If people have got genuine symptoms from them. Now, most lipomas will not cause symptoms. People will say, it gives me pain, doc. It usually doesn't. They've got pain from their neck or their back or something else, but they see the lump and they fixate on that. So they think it causes symptoms. Most lipomas are painless. Most cysts are painless. The ones that are deep to the deep fascia, which generally means intramuscular. And again, it's sometimes hard to tell, but if you get them to tense the muscles and it becomes less palpable, it's probably intramuscular. They're the ones we want to see. And those with genuine cosmetic concerns, the really big thing on the shoulder that bulges out and makes them look like Quasimodo, the ones on the face, but please send them to plastics, not general surgery. Okay? So genuine symptoms. What will we see, particularly at counties, we'll see pretty much everything that you send us at the moment. But please do not abuse that trust, otherwise we won't be able to do it anymore. Give us good information so that we can triage them appropriately. And John Morrow, who's going to be speaking to us shortly, is one of our triage surgeons who looks at all the referrals and sends the ones that, are, that seem to be genuinely important. We prioritize them fast. <clears throat> the other ones may be waiting for a bit longer. Okay, But generally, we will see everything. Please don't exaggerate the size to get them seen, okay? <laughs> and again, most of the ones, particularly on the back, you've got to remember skin is thick on the back. It's about a centimetre so, or five millimetres. So the two sides of the lesion, you add another centimetre of apparent size to the lump underneath. Fat people, you can add another centimetre or two of fat. So just imagine what's under the surface and then squish it into that spherical equivalent. Um, and please, the final plea is don't give the patients an expectation that we will operate on everyone. We won't. We will assess them, but many of the patients we will say, this is nothing to worry about, like the guy that I saw in clinic yesterday. There's one variant that is of interest, and that's multiple lipomas. These are people that often present with many, many small lipomas, and they are tender. They're often on the forearm, sometimes on the trunk. And it's a genetic dominant, autosomal dominant, uh, that some people pick up. Uh, they'll get multiple lipomas over their life. And what we recommend for that is it's a clinical diagnosis. When you see these people, you know what it is if you've seen a few of them. As a GP, feel free to biopsy one for a diagnosis. And that'll usually say angiolipoma and then you've nailed it. The ones that are genuinely symptomatic from those, send them to us and what we often do is we do a general anesthetic and do a whole bunch of them at once. Okay, final bit of the talk, lymph nodes. And again, I'm gonna make this very, very simple. Most lymph nodes that you guys see are gonna be simple and straightforward and nothing to worry about. The ones that are nasty are usually obviously nasty. 
There's not much that falls in between, so don't fret too much about it. Malignant nodal disease, you're gonna know it. They're feeling hard, there's lots of them. It's pretty obvious. So use your common sense, but if you're worried, refer. The question becomes, who do you refer to with lymph nodes? Do they have a known cancer? If they've got a known cancer, send it back to the team that is usually dealing with that or has dealt with it previously. And often the ones around the head and neck, um, smokers, uh, those sort of things, it's gonna be pretty obvious, they need to go to ENT. Axillary nodes, always think about a breast cancer diagnosis in the appropriate age and examine the breasts. But please, you know, don't forget the basics. Do a good history and a thorough examination. So recently a patient was sent to me with an FNA diagnosis of an axillary node that said melanoma. Um, they'd been through a breast clinic. They'd been through a good GP and a good specialist colleague of mine. But what they hadn't done is uh, notice that the woman was coming in holding her hand like this. And I said to her, what's going on there? Showed me her finger and her nail was completely destroyed by this fungating lesion. Okay, so take a history, examine the patient, you'll usually get some clues as to what's going on. Should I arrange a biopsy? Yes, this is where potentially biopsy is useful for lymph nodes. Lymph node FNA is highly effective at showing epithelial cancers and melanoma. So if you've got something like that, it'll often give you the clues as to where to send them. It will not diagnose or exclude lymphoma on the other hand. So they're the ones that often, if you've got multiple nodes, relatively young people and B symptoms, they're the ones you need to think, just speak to a hematologist directly. Bottom line for the whole talk about lumps and bumps, most of them are benign, okay? So you can reassure the patients, especially if they're short, small lesions, these patients should be reassured and not offered surgery. Refer larger or concerning lesions for an opinion, and we're very happy to see them, um, and particularly large or worrying lymph nodes, but call us. We actually like talking to people, and it can often save you and the patient a heck of a lot of time um, by getting the right advice to send them to the right service. Okay, thank you very much.